And welcome uh, to this month's monthly core range tasting uh, from Matt Mira. I will be your main host, Mickey Plummer, and ably assisted by my good pal and colleague, Carl. Good evening, Carl. How you doing, man? You good? I'm very good, brother. All the better for seeing you, obviously. <laughs> Coming out from behind the uh, behind the uh, director's chair for once. Yeah. Join your Getting the team back together, as it were. <laughs> yeah. No. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is our first tasting where we're actually should hopefully be have some of our uh, European uh, fans and ambassadors and stuff like that with us as well this evening. Uh, so because we've opened up the MacMirror.com site uh, to incorporate all of our business now, really, um, we should hopefully uh, have some of our uh, European friends with us. So please, uh, UK friends and fans and European friends and fans, please let us know in the comments. Uh, say hi if it's your first time, your 20th time, doesn't matter. Yeah, just come and say hi, and uh, we'll hope we'll read some of your comments. We'll have a good conversation, hopefully, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, but first of all, this evening, uh, we do have um, a present for you all and to say thanks for coming. Uh, Carl, would you like to take us through what the present is for ladies and gentlemen? Yes, uh, so we've got a deal on tonight. So if you enjoy the drums you're drinking tonight, uh, and especially the Bjork tap, um, if you buy a bottle of Obiox, have our latest seasonal release, uh, you will get 40% off any other one of our core bottlings. Uh, so you just need to go to macmirror.com, um, add a couple of bottles into your basket and use the code BjorkSav40 at checkout. Uh, and that's literally only on until midnight tonight. So make sure you get straight on, um, get yourself a BjorkSav and then get yourself 40% off any other core bottling. So if you're drinking... Uh, your whiskey's tonight with someone else, a, a loved one or a family member or a friend, and you're not sure which one you like is your favourite between you, don't pick one, pick both. Uh, so yeah, Bjorkstaff40 at macmira.com. Fantastic, Cole. Fantastic. So you can't really pass that up, ladies and gentlemen, really. And if you really do enjoy our show this evening or you're having to miss us for a particular reason and you can't have your dramas or whatever, we will be back. Uh, we will be back... <laughs> Uh, on Thursday, the 8th of July, uh, to to repeat this tasting. So if there's something you weren't too sure on, maybe we didn't answer a question, or you just want to see some more of us, and who could blame you, really? <laughs> uh, then we will be back uh, on uh, Thursday, the 8th of July at 7 p.m. Um, and also, guys, this is a really good chance as well. Uh, now the world, uh, especially in Europe and stuff like that, and especially in the UK, is opening back up again. Um, it's tight if you're a part of a whiskey club uh, or there's a, a decent group of you that will form a whiskey club and you want Macmira along for a tasting, uh, then drop us a message uh, and let's see what we can do for you. Um, so, yeah, so learn a bit more about some maybe some of our other, our other bottlings that we're not quite uh, doing this evening. Ah, oh, Gary, good evening uh, to the Stell. Hi from Sweet. Oh, brilliant. I'm loads of people saying hello again. I love it. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, guys. So, uh, Carl, can you quickly take us through our running order and then we'll get into the drums? Yes, I can. So, uh, we'll be starting today with the Brooks Whiskey. Uh, we'll then go into the Mac. We'll then go into the Bjork Sav. And then we'll then go on to the Spence Ick. Then we'll go on to... So, yeah. Brooks Whiskey, Mac, Bjork Sav, Ick. And finishing on another rook. And when we get to the rook, if you've not tried uh, Mac Mirror before, you'll understand why we've got that one. 
as our closer for the evening. Uh, we're going to be with you for about sort of an hour-ish, something like that. Uh, we'll take you through those drums. Um, and yeah, please feel free to chime in with any uh, questions you've got. So, pour the first dram, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you've got some water handy and stuff like that as well. Pour your first dram, which is Brooks Whiskey. So as we go through the drams, yeah, we'll, we'll tell you a little bit about McNeera history and how we do things at McNeera. And then we'll also, then we'll talk a little bit about the dram and ask you guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at home uh, to chime in with any questions, comments, observations, anything you want, guys. So that would be fantastic. Uh, if you could do that, that makes our life a little bit easier as well in interacting from you and what you guys want out of us as well. So that'd be great. Oh, brilliant. Oh, from Yervla. Fantastic. Good evening, David. Nice. So, way back in 1990, so as we, as we touch on Brooks Whiskey, uh, feel free, you don't have to pour all of your dram, guys. Well, you've all got five CL drams. Don't feel you have to pour the whole five CLs, okay? Just maybe take it down a half uh, or a quarter, whatever you want to do, just a little bit in the glass to enjoy it, get the taste of notes, etc., and then maybe savour it for a little bit later on uh, or whenever you, you wish. Um, but like Carl said, you know, covering five drams in about an hour, an hour and ten minutes, <laughs> yes. it's, it's quite a mission, okay? So we, we try to, um, to promote responsible drinking. Uh, so, yeah, please don't feel you have to uh, pour your whole, your whole five seal dram, okay? Yeah. Save yourself right. a little bit to have at your own leisure. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So enough of that. Get nose in. Uh, have a wee sip. Uh, and we'll get back to that in a minute. But back in 1998, uh, our, our eight founders were just friends at the time uh, that went to university together. Uh, and they used to meet up once a year uh, at, at their ski lodge in, in Salem. Um So uh, on that, that, that fateful evening in 1998, um, <laughs> They all brought a bottle of single malt whiskey to dinner with them. Uh, so it's a bit of a coincidence. Um, so the other and, and, and so over dinner, the conversation got around to, well, why don't we have a Swedish single malt distillery? You know, we've got some fairly decent weather. We've got some amazing water. We could grow some fantastic barley. You know, we've got our own wood for casks. Uh, yeah. you know, we've got our own peat. We've got, you know, we've got Scandinavian ways of doing things. Um, so they said, well, why not? And then a whole year later, uh, on December the eighteenth, uh, nineteen ninety nine, uh, the very first, the very first Macmira liquid uh, come off the very first still uh, that was actually handmade, a hundred bit still handmade by the founders. Um, we then obviously after that went on to establish ourselves at, at Macmira Brook uh, two or three years later, um, and at Macmira Brook. Uh, that's where we started to, you know, we, we got our, our, our grown-up stills in, basically, you know, mm -hmm. uh, ones, you know, a permanent home type things, you know. So we had a 10,000-litre wash still and an 8,000-litre spirit still. Uh, so we can produce a, a decent amount of liquid without being, you know, too massive and still getting that good contact, etc. So, um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. So the, the woman that puts this all together... Uh, for us is a, is a fantastic woman called Angela Darazio. She was uh, inducted into the whiskey Hall, the whiskey magazine Hall of Fame uh, back in uh, 2019, uh, and the second woman ever to do so as well. So she's quite the she's quite the pioneer uh, when it comes to whiskey, and you'll find out about that as as we go through these drums that we're about to taste now. Really, um, so yeah, I think that's that's a good a good introduction. Um, we'll, 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 we'll talk a little bit more. So, you know, at the moment, Brooks Whiskey come from originally, it was our very first um, proper core range. Yeah. Uh, that was absolutely top three. Thomas, don't don't ruin it just yet. We'll get on to that. We'll get, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. You know, to use as himself. Thank you very kindly. Um, so I, I just, I, I lost. So there we go. Yeah, so Brooks Whiskey, uh, our very, in that bottle you can see there, tells the story of Macmira as, as well. You can see the Brooks distillery at the top of the bottle there. We've got we've got uh, um, uh, we've got our symbol down at the bottom. We've got casks on there. Uh, we've got some of the leaves, etc. That whole bottle really does tell a really good story. So uh, Macmira, uh, so Brooks is at forty one point four percent. It's non non color correct, so there's no E one fifty, but it is mm -hmm. slightly what's called cool filtered. 
Um, and that's just for the appearance of the whiskey, basically, uh, because it's down at that that, that low uh, ABV. Um, so the casks that went into making up Brooks whiskey. Uh, so the recipe was 200 liter first fill bourbon casks, 100 liter first fill Swedish oak casks, a, uh, one 100 liter uh, first fill sherry cask, and a 200 liter ex bourbon cask that had uh, a slightly different liquid put into it. So all the other liquids that were put into those casks I just mentioned were from our elegant recipe, our non-peated recipe. But that that last that that two hundred liter ex bourbon cask that's gone into the into the mix is what we call our smoke tail cask. Uh, we'll we'll go into a little bit more about our smoking process later on down the line. But smoke tail basically is it's our um, non peated uh, our non peated uh, new mix spirit that's gone through the system just after a peated run basically, and it, so it's not a fully peated run. Um, it's it's there to I wouldn't say clean out because that would be wrong, but just to give a, a different a different profile, so we can add these smoke tail tasks into recipes a little bit like a chef would use salt and pepper. Yeah, I like that. I very much like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's subtle, isn't it? So I think if going on to sort of some of the tasting notes, it's some can detect a hint of sort of smokiness in there. Um, some can't. I'll be honest. I I can't personally. I don't know about you, Mick. Um, can you detect any of that smokiness well, in there? I, I don't get it. Guys, you can go back to all of the previous ones uh, of these tastings that we've done for our core range through when we were doing single bottle shows like just over a year ago. You know, in you know, we've been doing this for oh, a, a year and a half. A year and a bit now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just sort of a year and a half, these online shows um, in different various guises. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've had a few reincarnations along the way. Um, but one thing's always stayed... Uh, and that's Brooks. I've never ever got that smoke tail influence. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, some people they they've chimed in and said that they do get it, and more power to them. Um, you, you've got a more refined, a more refined uh, sense of smell and more refined palate than myself, Carl. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, but no, uh, we do say Brooks whiskey is our breakfast whiskey. Now we yeah. say that a little bit. We, we say that a bit tongue in cheek. We're not saying you know going back to the responsible drinking aspect, there, ladies and gentlemen. We're not saying you should, you know, drink whiskey for breakfast. What we're saying is you start the day with breakfast and Brooks is a good way to start uh, a wee evening or, or a wee time of, of some whiskey drinking. It's light. It's quite refreshing. It's not overly complicated, but you can find some good stuff going on there that gets your brain thinking yeah. and it gets your palate working, you know. Um, uh, it's I, I really thoroughly enjoy it. What's, what's your favorite aspects of Brooks whiskey call so for me something like you said so the light sweetness um that I tend to get from it um there's pear sort of a little bit citrus in there as well pear I think is one of the notes that sort of runs through as a through line for Macamira's liquid so if you're not trying yeah. any Macamira before um hopefully you'll detect a little bit of that kind of pear appley fresh ripe fruit um coming through quite soft on the palate um any spice there for you? I think it's it's very, very delicate, if anything, Mick. Very, very delicate, and I tend to get it more at the back of the palate on the finish. Yeah, I'll that's, agree with that. That's, that. that's that Swedish oak cask influence, which we'll talk about uh, as, as we, when we move on to Svensk a little bit later on. Yeah. yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, what are your impressions of Brooks Whiskey, please? Please let us know any particular tasting notes you're yeah. getting, uh, things that remind you of. Uh, yeah, please. Um, yeah. I'm seeing uh, yeah, the CW, so I haven't seen many of the online tastings. Finally, the mini tasting last Saturday. Welcome to the clan. Uh, yeah, have a, have a thoroughly good time. So, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Good stuff. Hola, Craig. Hola. Uh, Craig's tuning in from uh, sunny Costa del Kirk and Tillock, uh, up here just outside of Glasgow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so uh, him and his business partner run a very good shop. Uh, we, we have quite a few... Uh, Quite a few customers that run very good shops, obviously. Uh, but but uh, we mentioned there for Craig at the Spirit of Alba in Kirk and Tillich. Uh, so, all that, Craig. Uh, so, yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's Brooks Whiskey and a first intro uh, into uh, into MacMira, really. Mm -hmm. So, that takes us up to um, 2011, into 2012. Yeah. Um, and which happily takes us on to the next the next whiskey car. Would you like to take it away, sir? Yes. 
So if you're all with us and you're ready to slide on, uh, again, keep coming keep coming up with those uh, those tasting notes and those comments you got in the bottom. We'll make sure we try and read as many of them as possible. Uh, so we're going to slide on to our second dram of the evening. Um, not a massive departure from the Brooks Whiskey, and this one is the Mac. Um, so the Mac, yeah. So that's all a nice uh, turquoise bottle, quite nice, clean, modern design. Um, and this one was made entirely at our Gravity Distillery. Um which we moved into in 2011. Yeah. Right with the date, yeah. There you go. That that shape on the back of the bottle there, Carl. I was trying to put I was trying to but failing to point to. Um there we go. Uh there we go. Uh that's the actual shape where you can see on the picture that was just shown up by Matt there. Uh, the yeah. actual shape of the distillery. Um yeah, and Carl's gonna tell us a bit more about the gravity distillery yeah. in the next phase. Yeah, so our, our gravity distillery, essentially, it's the, it's the first uh, of its kind. Still currently the only active uh, gravity-fed distillery. Uh, I believe there is one uh, just north of Edinburgh in Leith uh, that is currently being built. Uh, and essentially, the basic principle of um, a gravity distillery is that it uses the uh, natural gravity to assist the distillation process. So traditionally, uh, distilleries are fed horizontally, uh, whereas ours is fed vertically. Uh, so we feed all our barley up to the top of the distillery um, and then it works its way down through the different stages of the whiskey making process um, to essentially create liquid and that is a massive benefit for us and the fact it saves us 30 about 45 percent uh energy cost is that correct am i right yeah, with that so one? Okay, yeah when, when we did when we did the the running costs in and the big brains that were much bigger than mine and yours Cole, when yeah, we did yeah definitely the, the proper sustainability and the green aspects and all that sort of stuff of the running of the Ode Brooks distillery uh, against the running of the Gravity distillery, we were found to be 45% more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, one of, our, yeah, one, of, and one of our key ethos is being <laughs> as light touch as we can in the distillery, as uh, carbon, um, carbon conscious as we can. Um, and being a relatively new distillery, we do have that freedom to uh, essentially do things a little bit differently and try and have that as one of our key focal points. Uh, Matt, if you just pop the picture of the distillery back up again, I could just uh, quickly quickly show people. So basically, it's seven floors tall, uh, 35 meters tall, and it's seven floors. Um, if you can see right at the top there, we've got our sky bar. Uh, so hopefully when everything gets back to what we consider normal, you can get yourself over to Yervla uh, and pop up to the sky bar, get yourself a little dram and have a beautiful view around of the forest all around you. Um, but yeah, you can see in there, it's, that's where the process starts and it works its way down through there. Um, we even capture, recapture the heat uh, from the stills and use that to heat the building uh, as well. So again, we're trying as much as possible not to, not to use any waste. Uh, in terms of generating that heat, um, the bio pellets we used, um, we used bio pellets to actually heat the uh, stills up themselves as well. Um, so I'm drawing a blank there, Mick. Uh, bio pellets. Yeah, so we feed a bio, we, we feed a biomass burner. To make the bio pellets, uh, we use a couple of ingredients. Uh, one of the main ingredients is what's called our draft. Uh, mm. So the 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 wastage basically after distillation. Yeah, uh, all that all that spent grain. It's given us everything that it can do. Uh, instead of going off to feed cattle um, or other biomass burners like it does from other distilleries around the world. Um, we take it and we feed our own biomass burner. We also uh, are carbon neutral. So we're, we're in a forest, uh, as you saw from the pictures there, and yeah. when we use the trees as filters. So when, when one of the filters gets full, um, we, we, we chop that down and use that as, as fuel as well to go into the bio pellets to feed the biomass burner. And obviously, we replant, we, we you know, responsibly replant the trees uh, as well, so we've got that sustainability effort and that going on there. That's a great cutaway of the distillery there. And you can see each stage uh, as it goes. So you've got people enjoying themselves at the sky bar, and then we've got the the sieving to sieve out any stones and stuff like that. That's that's potentially come on the delivery. Then we go into the milling part, uh, then down into the mash tun, uh, where we steep it in the, in three different uh, three temperatures of hot water to remove as much of the those usable good sugars to turn into alcohol as possible. Then we go into to the fermentation tanks, which you see to the right there on the first jutty out bit. Uh, in there, at fermentation, we add our cronyast, uh, or it's a slow-acting baker's yeast. 
uh, and our fermentation takes about between five to seven days. So when when we talk about our natural DNA character for Macmira, we do talk about a lot of, um, of those orchard fruits and stuff, Carl, don't we? I mean, you yes. mentioned the pear stuff. Yeah, so that's probably one of the big key things uh, for us is there. And that comes from that, that slow fermentation time, you know. Uh, it's probably twice as long as the industry standard. Uh, industry standard is about the 40, the 72-hour 72, yeah. 72 mark-ish, give or take. Every, obviously, uh, there's a lot of distilleries that are, that are very different, um, but that's that's what we do. We're about twice as long as industry standard. Uh, and then obviously from fermentation, we go down into distillation where the really good the really good magic happens. Uh, and then down at the bottom into the filling store where we fill the casks to go off uh, to our mines, etc. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so hopefully, you know, we stay at the gravity distillery for, for, for quite a long time. Um, and in and fact, I found out today, Carl, Mm. Absolutely right. And I don't know if you know this, but I didn't know this until today. Um, but back to back to our first round, Brooks whiskey, and how you know it's really at the heart of a lot of the stuff we do at MacMira. There's yeah. actually a bottle of Brooks whiskey set into the foundations of the Gravity Distillery. Oh, nice! I found that out today. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I didn't know that actually. No, I didn't that's either. Nice. So oh, the that's Brooks nice whiskey we have first was is, is a founding keystone for the dram you're drinking now. All right, it's a bit of a, a stretch, but that's the romantic way of saying it. Oh, yeah, no, no, oh, 100%. We love a bit of romance. In the whiskey industry, 100%. 100%. Any romance or tale or yarn you can spin, 100% you want to um, you want to lean on that, definitely. So, yeah, so the Mac, 40% ABV. Um, again, similar, uh, light, easy drinking profile. Um it is uh, color corrected and it's designed for essentially uh, bartenders and mixologists and creators. So it's designed to have fun with. Um, and one of the things that helps us get an even color uh, in cocktails, etc., is by uh, color correcting it. Uh, so it shouldn't do anything to the flavor. Um, but yeah, it, again, that's that's part of the reason why we've, why I've got that in there. And it is mentioned on the back of the bottle. Um, Mick, casking, help me out here. Just first and second fill American oak. That's it. Simples. That is it. No overcomplicated cast situation. So this is really, really good uh, way of expressing um, what we produce at MacMira. Really, you know, this is probably mm. one of our more key things there. So what's come off us? The only thing that's influenced this is, is first and second fill American oak. Um, so yeah, so you're going to get that bit of natural bit of sweetness that you're going to get from from American oak, etc. Uh, and as you can see, just over my right shoulder there, you know how well does that stand out from a back bar? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it catches your eye. It does exactly what it's designed to do. Yeah, uh, I like playing about with this. Um, it's it's great fun. Yeah, but, so, so, that's what I'm saying. So in terms of notes, people should be getting. I get again sweetness straight away. Um, straight up front that, that, that again that pear that orchard fruit is there for me I tend to find on this and I don't know if you agree with me or not Mike, Mickey that potentially it's because of those those um, American oak casks um, that you get a bit more of that there's a touch more spice to it um, yeah. do you get any of that at all yeah definitely I don't get it as much as I get it on the brooks okay. uh, and, and we'll talk about the difference between American oak and Swedish oak when they get onto Spence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, th there's a little bit there, but I get the more, I'll get that more toffee sweetness with this one because of that American oak. Yeah, I'll go with that. Toffee um, so, caramel. Yeah. Obviously, with this being designed um, for, for a back bar, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you all a question. What is your favorite whiskey based cocktail? Uh, is it an old fashioned? Is it a black Manhattan? I've been experimenting with that recipe lately as well. Okay. Uh, so anybody that does follow me on, on my own social media might have seen that the other day, and uh, maybe we'll do it. Uh, maybe we'll do a cocktail show one day. Yeah, we'll do it. It's been yeah, a while since we've done a cocktail show. I think we can yeah, do that. Yeah, you bring some some stuff back, and we'll get we'll get the put the core range into a mm. cocktail setting. Mm. There you go. I'm just I'm thinking about that. Right? Loud, apologies. You uh, you <laughs> me doing this show for you. You've interrupted my thought process. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a simple, I'm a simple guy, Mick, uh, and an old fashioned does it for me, mm. especially when the weather's like this. Yeah, definitely. Nice big lump of ice. Yeah, bit of sugar, bit of bitters. Stir that in. Drop the mac in. Boom. 
there you go. Nice and simple, easy to create. Yeah, I think the only thing that um that you might struggle with in most people's houses to get is is some uh, some bitters, really, some aromatic yeah. uh, or sugar bitters, really. Uh, but once you do have a bottle, they pretty much last forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I picked up a bottle of bitters last year for a show we did, um, yeah. and that st still lasted me. <laughs> Definitely. Me Definitely. and my ghetto cocktails. <laughs> you know, we, we say Max great for cocktails and stuff like that, but don't forget, is it, you know, we're having it straight up here this evening. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and yet it's great on its own. It's got its... Oh, great, great. Craig's really quite inventive. He, he's quite an imaginative guy. Okay. Uh, he tastes the bourbon and Lynchburg lemonade. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Like it. Like it. Craig, you'll have to let us know what's in Lynchburg Lemonade again. Uh, I, my mind's gone blank on that one. I know the name, and I roughly know what goes on in it, but please let us know what, what's in that. Yeah. Uh, that'd be lovely. I'm seeing sweet, sweety, sweetness and spiciness, so that's, uh, that's already a win for me. Yeah. Definitely. Well, most definitely. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's great to see some of your comments and that coming in, and it's nice to have some some new people with us and some old people. Uh, and we'll forgive Grant for being late uh, just because he's a pal of mine. Um, more than anything else, <laughs> we didn't know if he wouldn't be forgiven. But no, only joking, obviously. Uh, you, we rock up, you make some comments, and, and we're all good. You know, we are all good. Yeah. So that's dram number one and number two out of the way. And we're pretty much up to date um, with MacMira history there, really, aren't we? You know, we've gone from where we started back in 98, just around the dinner table, to yeah. the first liquid coming off the stills in 99, uh, to moving into our first grown-ups distillery in 2002, yeah. uh, to then moving into our, you know, our hopefully future-proof, um, our yeah. future-proof and uh, more sustainable distillery uh, at, at, uh, in the Whiskey Village, just outside of Yervla, uh, at the Gravit Distillery, the world's only working Gravit Distillery at the moment. Yeah. Um, there isn't splendor. Yeah. So, you know, so that's two, that's two whiskies we've had now, Carl, out of our, yeah. what's our core range. Yeah. I was going to say, just before we move on, when I was looking around the uh, the Brooks whiskey bottle, um, which is, like, like you said, like there's, there's loads of the story going around the outside of it. So if you do pick up a full size one, it's definitely worth having a good old look around it. Um, but I saw these little orange orange uh, markings on the Brooks whiskey bottle. Um, and if we, uh, if we can see them there on the camera, let me see if I can get them there. Uh, there we are. Yeah, um, Mick, have we, have we been over uh, what they represent? No, we have not. Would you care to tell us, Carl? Uh, I can. Uh, if I, can I, just, I didn't want to jump in in case you had it like saved up for no, I don't have it later on the show. So, yeah. So, Mac Mira, uh, break it down into two, essentially translates into midgy and bog. As in the simplest terms. So I hope everyone joining us tonight has enjoyed the first two drams of Midgey Bog or Midgey Swamp. Um, <laughs> it obviously sounds a lot more elegant in Swedish than it does in English. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the origin of the name. And it just reminded me, I saw the little uh, the little midges on the um yeah. on the side of the bottle that reminded me. Um so yeah, <laughs> just think a great a great no, I, I completely uh, forgot about doing the actual great. meaning of Mark Mira. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for Thanks for that. Uh, and obviously, Brooks whiskey. Brooks means like uh, useful, industrial, uh, versatile, yeah. and that's pretty much what the Brooks whiskey is. Do you know what I mean, yeah. it can use quite a lot of things. It's it's there. So Craig's give us his recipe for an Inchberg lemonade. Uh, so we've got some triple sec lemon juice, uh, and Craig likes to make it longer, especially on nice warm days uh, with lemonade. Nice. Sometimes find a dash of cherry bitters also. Nice. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's one to to take a note of. Uh, pretty pretty simple there. I think the yeah. only thing that you might not have at home is some triple sec, really. Um, but yeah, so treat yourself to a bottle of triple sec. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That brings us up to, shall we uh, slide on to our Bjerks of our latest seasonal, Mickey? We shall. We shall. With, with Bjerks have so we've mentioned already that uh, we're going to cover two out of our three ranges this evening. Our core mm -hmm. range, our seasonal range is what we're going to cover. We've also got our moments range as well, yeah. uh, which we just released a new one of. So Brooks whiskey, we've uh, we've grown it up into an adult uh, for Brooks Deluxe, but we'll talk about that a bit later on. So uh, ably prompted by Matthew in the background, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Bjork Sav. So Bjork Sav. Bjork Sav um, means uh, birch sap. Yeah. So uh, the, some of the casks that went into making this up were birch sap wine casks. Um, 
So this is this is our, our normal standard uh, 46.1%. Uh, the majority of Mac Mirrors you'll come across mm-hmm. will be 46.1%. In fact, going from now on, the remaining three whiskies of the evening will be 46.1%. That's always quite handy to have the water knocking about just in case. Okay, it's always good to sip to keep yourself rehydrated as well because uh, we're having some quite warm weather. And I do believe um, the, the the area around the distillery uh, is having some quite warm weather as well. I was on with some oh, really? of our on a call with some of our colleagues in Sweden earlier on today, Carl, uh, and they said it was quite warm uh, yeah. about the, the, the 28, 30 mark in Jervla. Nice. Mm. Which is obviously it's an, really quite warm. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, yeah, so the seasonal range... Um, before we start in with that, uh, Matt, have we got the video, the Bjork Sav video? I like that. Spring is somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so see that we released two seasons a year. We started it uh, in the autumn winter of 2013 mm. um, uh, with Midnight Sol. So Midnight Sun was the very first one. Uh, I wasn't with the company at that point, uh, so I can't quite remember what goes into that. I shall do some more research on my history of. Uh, so any of our more established McNeera fans uh, that are watching this evening, if you could let me know what was in Midnight Sol. Uh, that would be lovely. Um, and since we've got a, a European uh, European distribution now, uh, I, I might fling a hit flask your way or something like that. I'll get in trouble off the map now. <laughs> but we'll see. You can tell me what was in Midnight Soul. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, so twice a year, we bring out a seasonal. So, um, uh, in summer, a spring, summer, and an autumn winter. Sorry, that was just a very fast motorbike that's just gone the full length of the UK. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what, what we do with those releases is um, we echo and represent uh, that time of the year, basically. Uh, so with Bjerk Sav, um, we've basically created spring in a bottle, mm-hmm. essentially. As, as that video quite nicely puts, do you know what I mean? That, that emerging from the frost. Those first buds growing, you know, the first buds of spring, uh, just as that warmth is starting to set in there. So we're continuing our proud tradition of challenging whiskey norms uh, and highlighting Swedish nature. Yeah, you know, the flavour, the craftsmanship. Uh, so, so in keeping with this approach, really, uh, um, this year's spring edition Björksav uh, is whiskey that provides a, a clear sign uh, of spring uh, as the opening of the birch buds, as we saw in the video. So, like all our seasonal releases, Birch Savage Birch Limited Edition, um, 15,000-ish, give or take. Um, oh, perfect. One of, one of Mac Mira's super fans oh, under nice. there, uh, runs his own website. And I tell you what, it is a hive, a hive of information there at macmiracollection.com. Uh, honestly, I get some of my information from my tasting. <laughs> yeah. it, it's fantastic. So, well done, Anders. Thank you very much for that, sir. Um, so yeah, so Bjork so it's about 15,000 bottles, give or take. Uh, yeah, um, it's about that. Um, yeah, so you know, it's so like I said, you know, we adapt them to the prevailing season's flavors. Uh, so this is this has been quite a, a good success, really, uh, mm-hmm. over a good few years, you know. Uh, the seasonal additions have also helped the distillery gain a positive international reputation at the same time because we're pushing the envelope on this sort of stuff, you know. Uh, last year's uh, autumn, uh, sorry, yeah, spring, summer uh, was the Grand Tea, so a green tea casks that we used for that, you know, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, for more information on, on the green tea or the Grand Tea, uh, please look at our, our back catalogue of, of, uh, of tasting videos uh, and you'll find some more information about it there. Um, so yeah, so so this whiskey's final maturation um, is it, saturated with flavours that reflect Swedish nature, basically. So the seasonal range makes a strong contribution uh, to McMurray's innovation and leadership uh, in New World whiskey. Which you know, talking about our, um, our, our our some of our successes this year, we actually won the the rest of the world category uh, icons of whiskey um, distiller of the year. 
And we also took the rest of the world category um, most sustainable distillery of the year as well. Uh, so, you know, we're really doing our part with that. Um, so in this year's spring edition, the, the beer itself, uh, we once again collaborated with the Swedish artisan winery. Uh, excuse my murder of this because I am terrible. This is a really oh, difficult word to pronounce. Grittendan. Uh, Grittentan Vin. Grittentan Vin. Yeah, it's a Grittentan <laughs> one. Uh, like, so like us, Grittentan uh, uses exceptional crafting skills, uh, showing consideration and respect for nature, uh, not only using natural ingredients, uh, you know, but the way that the, you know, the fresh and delicate sweet uh, Björk or the Birchstadt wine has resulted in a uniquely crafted, swing, uh, crafted Swedish whiskey uh, that's, you know, ready to, to get out there. And we've, since we've launched this, it's really pretty freaking good. Yeah. Uh, we've got a really good uptake on this so far. And so tonight, um, as Carl mentioned at the beginning, and as you can see on your screens down there, if you visit macmira.com, uh, buy yourself a bottle of Björk Sav, and you'll receive 40% off uh, one of the core range bottlings. Uh, so the two we've tried already, and the two we're going to try uh, after Björk Sav. Um, so yeah, so buy a Björk Sav and get 40% off uh, a core range using code Björksav40. You see, and this is a rinse yeah, there for your pronunciation. Yes. Grititan? Yes. Grititan. I agree, Anders. I think we need to get Moa back on for another lesson. <laughs> yeah, for another lesson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Björksav, floral and fruity on the nose. Uh, a little bit of light spice, vanilla fudge. Get it on your palate. Yeah. Mm. Go on, it's, it's right there, isn't it? It's mm. oh. fruity, spiciness, quite mouth filling. You should notice the higher ABV versus the first two we tried as well. Um, touch of honey, maybe, um, adding to that kind of slightly oiliness, a little bit of sandalwood, a little bit of cedar. Yeah, and then finishes quite light with a delicate spice for me. Um, quite clean as well in the finish. What do you, what do you, anything you pick out, Mick? Um, yeah, it's, I, I get just, I do get that nice lightness of spring, but it's got that more, more presence in my mouth and on the palate. Mm. Uh, and so like, you know, we were talking about, um, Brooks whiskey being nice and light and refreshing. Mm. This is a, a different kind of light and refreshing, you know, there's still, yeah. there's, there's a bit more meatiness to this one, if you know what I mean, yes. As in more of a mouthfeel. More yeah. of, gives you more of a mouth coating. Yeah. Now, whether it's like with the, with the just, makeup, which we'll go through in a minute, uh, or it's that that higher ABV, you know. Yeah, I was going to say there's a little bit of that there's a little kind of savoury edge um, in there, um, yes. a little bit of a kind of an X factor in there, and uh, yeah, again, if if feel free to comment in, sort of chime in what your thoughts are on the uh, on the Buick side. If you're noticing that higher ABV, if you're noticing some of those floral fruity notes. Or perhaps if you're noticing um, that slightly different, slightly savoury note, what it what it sort of uh, what it means to you, or what it kind of jumps out to you. I think we've had some interesting interesting takes on what that note is uh, before. Yeah, again, under saying Bjork sounds great, one of the best seasonals yet, and there have been many good seasonals over here, and he is the authority on it. To be fair. He's, he's been drinking it longer he's, than I am. He is the non Macmillan employed authority on that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so as of as of this year, as of Bjork South, the release, mm. um, we're all about. Well, not as of. We, we've always been quite open about what goes in, uh, in into the whiskies. You know, the cask makeup that we've talked through, etc. It's all there on the product sheet. So, if you visit macmira.com and you click on a bottle, mm -hmm. and you'll get product sheets and stuff like that as well. And you'll get everything: the cask makeup, the lot. Well, this year, as of Bjork South, going forward with the seasonals, we've taken that up another notch. We've actually going to give you now percentages of yeah. cast type uh, that have gone into makeup. Uh, so for this one, uh, we've taken whiskey, aged in ex bourbon casks, uh, which makes up thirty percent of the total recipe. Twenty four percent of the recipe is from whiskey aged in Oloroso casks. Twenty percent of the total recipe, yeah, uh, is whiskey finished in the Birchshire wine casks that we mentioned. Mm. Uh, and that eighteen percent is made up of a um, like a seasoned seasonings, uh, seasoning <laughs> seasoning casks. Um, so different types of like wine casks etc have gone into to make that up. 
And then uh, for the last 8%, uh, the whiskey that was aged in the Swedish oak casks have gone into the recipe. So um, all that together. So that that's pretty um, – I, I don't think we can get any clearer, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, yeah. So I, let's know what you think of the transparency uh, and all that sort of good stuff on that, ladies and gentlemen. That would be lovely. Yeah. Um, and let us know your thoughts on Bjorksav. Uh, others says the seasonals are definitely exciting and great value for money. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, obviously we agree. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I think I think um, I think outs, you know outside of the core range, which obviously is there as a staple, it's there year round. It's it's kind of Angela's chance as a CNO, a chief nose and upper, to kind of play and have a bit of fun um, with the only kind of guiding principle being. Um, you know, we're doing something spring, summer, or we're doing something autumn, winter. As that as a guiding ethos, she's got a lot of freedom to play around with what kind of profile she wants to create, you know, what kind of casks she wants to use to create an interesting whiskey. You know, last year we had the green tea, the grunt yeah. tea. Um, you know, in Yaklik, you've got lingonberry and blueberry wines in there. You know, I think Bjorksaf being you know, sap wine is, is no different in terms of in terms of its uniqueness. Um, cool. So I think you can tell, you can taste, for me anyway, you can taste the kind of the fun she's having uh, with these different sort of bottlings. And hopefully, I think we, we might have had some um, uh, Bjerk Sav wine uh, landed with us, Cole. So if you see us out and about on some tastings, we might be able to provide a wee sample of the of an example of the wine uh, that went into to, to, to influencing uh the, the, this whiskey basically so uh we had to sort out the finer details of that but i'm sure once we get to in-person tastings and we were able to do that better and have a yeah. better control of it uh then yeah I, that, that, I think that's what happened i like doing those side-by-side things carl i don't know about yourself but you know i like you know if it's been a, a, a caribbean cask and i like to taste some of the rum that went into making that yeah you know uh, some some red wine for me i'm a big red wine lover uh, and so I like, you know, you know uh, Rioja cask finishes and stuff like that, you know. I like trying some of that particular wine that went into it, you know, to, to, to get that influence going and, and see and making those comparisons and, and those differences and see where the, the new mix spirit has affected um, the, the flavour profile of the wine or vice versa, like, you know. Yeah. I believe Matt is saying in the background, so only 10 in the UK as well. don't know if that was meant to be public knowledge or not, but uh, very limited. Um, but if it was, it was a public knowledge, then everybody that's watching at the moment, please, that would be lovely. <laughs> Thank you. That's our secret, okay, guys? Mm. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. So, no, so let us know what you're thinking so far. Um, what's your favourite one out of the first three that we've tried? Mm. Um, let us know your thoughts. Um, yeah, so a, a fun fact, a little, a little snippet. You can actually only har- they, so uh, Glitter and Pan can actually only harvest the birch sap by the first two weeks of spring, uh, just as those trees are thawing out, etc. Because uh, after that, it becomes a little bit too bitter to, to make the wine with, etc. Mm-hmm. So they've only got a two week window a year to actually harvest the birch sap to then go on to make the birch sap wine. So a little fun fact there for you, Cole. Yeah, nice. You follow them tonight. Hey? That's that's two little fun 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 facts you've uh, distributed. I like it. <laughs> it, it. It takes me back to when we used to do shows and I used to do Geek Corner call. I miss, oh I wow, doing, yeah, yeah. I miss doing a bit of Geek Corner every now and again. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Awesome. So, with that in mind, um, okay, cool. Pascal, uh, he enjoyed the beer. Had the most so far. Nice full taste. Not too strong for the summertime. Absolutely fantastic, Pascal. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. yeah so when I say I'm just about to get my next one, yeah. So if you're ready to join us on the uh, fourth one uh, this evening, ladies and gents, we're going on to our Svensk Ek, uh, which means uh, literally translates to Swedish oak. Um, we're staying at 46.1 percent now for the last two drums as well. So uh, that little ramp up. Um, you hopefully should get, and uh, again, Pascal, that note she said that, that bit more kind of bit more full taste. Uh, hopefully, that continues into these next two drums. Uh, so yeah, Svets Ek, Swedish oak, and the reason being is that ten percent of the overall recipe for sweet uh, for Svets Ek has spent its time in one hundred percent Swedish oak. 
I have to say that slowly, Mick, because I had to get my head around it a few times first. So, yeah, 10% of the overall liquid has spent its time in 100% Swedish oak. Um, so you'd think for a, a whiskey called, uh, you know, called Swedish oak, that you'd have a bigger percentage uh, of Swedish oak in your liquid. Um, but no, it wasn't necessary. And hopefully when we get to taste it, uh, you'll understand kind of why that is. It doesn't take much to kind of impart its flavor uh, on it. So yeah, 46.1%. In a nutshell, spicy, fruity, robust, and rounded uh, is kind of gone. That was me in a nutshell. Sorry. Oh, brilliant. So I thought you should kind of weirdly put your hand up to yeah. say something. Just some really crap. Um, Mike, Mike Myers. Answer. Yeah, just, just some crap. Mike Myers, um, Austin Powers, crap humor. That was all. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take my back a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's that's all right. No, you, don't worry. You've not interrupted my flow at all with your, uh, <laughs> with your little mime act. I'm, not, I'm, here, I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. It's been a while. Um, so, Gasking-wise, yeah. Uh, first and second fill, ex-Bourbon Oaks. And then uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, sorry, 10 months in 10%, 10 uh, for 18 months in Swedish oak. That's what we get there in the end. So, yeah, again, a short, a small amount of Swedish oak and for a relatively short amount of time to impart its flavor on it. So, yeah, if you want to get a little bit on your palate uh, and we can hopefully make a bit more sense of it. Make some sense out of that. Oof, that'd be good. <laughs> this is jam number four now, Carl. Do you know what I mean? So making yeah. sense at the moment. Well, I can think part of my... difficult. Sorry. <laughs> I apologise for the background noise. I've had my window uh, open because it's been quite warm. And usually live on quite a quiet street, but apparently we've got motocross trials going on this week yeah. up and down the road. So, <laughs> always um, the way, mate. Always the way. Uh, yeah, I didn't get the memo, so I do apologise for that. Yeah, they never check uh, our online diary that you can find online at macmirror.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they need to start checking these things out, Cole, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if it does happen again, Mick, you'll just have to take over and I'll, I'll pop myself That's on tight. mute. Um, That's but yeah, hopefully... Uh, if you've had a little sip of that, you should find that it's a little bit more robust, a little more mouth filling. You've got a little bit more kind of spiciness in there, certainly wood spice, sandalwood, uh, possibly a little bit of white pepper, black pepper, um, depending on where you lean. I tend to get a little bit of black. Uh, I think, Mickey, you tend to get a bit of white pepper, don't you, on this one? I am, yes. Yeah, That's yeah. Good, get, yes. Um, but again, there's still sweetness in there as well. We're talking, you know, we're talking bourbon casks as well, so you're gonna, still going to have vanilla, toffee, caramel, honey, those kind of notes coming through. Um, and in the official taste notes, we do have uh, balance with a little bit of dark chocolate uh, on the back end. Not everyone necessarily gets dark chocolate. I I, I do a little bit. Um, but it's interested to hear what you guys get out there. If you get any of that kind of dark chocolate coming, that, that sort of slightly sweet, but also slightly, um, slightly bitter, uh, slightly drying uh, aftertaste, uh, if you get any of that. In there, uh, anything else you'd add to the tasting notes, Mickey? Just that, just on the back, that that um, that white pepper, it's nice, and this does really do well with a drop of water in it. That's mm. you take that spice level down a little touch. If you do think it's a little bit too, oof, well, you're on the back of the throat, a little drop of water. I mean, a little drop, we're talking like one to two tear drops, nothing crazy, knocks yeah. that spiciness down a little bit, yeah, and allows more of those. Um, but the woody flavours, like the sandalwood, the ginger, the, the tobacco to come through, uh, with McNair's underpinning DNA. So those orchard fruits. Uh, Richard, uh, who, who normally co-hosts with me, uh, says what the Swedish oak does to McNair's, um flavour profile is, so we get orchard fruits, yeah, but the Swedish oak bakes it. So mm. you're getting like pear and apple, like tart to tan, type sort of flavours and stuff like that yeah. going on with it. Do you know what I mean? So it's not that fresh apple and pear anymore. It's that 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 baked orchard fruit smell. Mm. And it's a bit hard to disagree with that, really. He puts it well, bless him. He puts it well. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's, uh, yeah, currently occupied. Is it today, Mickey? It's, uh... it's yesterday. Yesterday. Tuesday. Some point this week. Yeah. At some point this week, uh, him, him and his lovely fiance Heather went and got married. So, uh, Shkol, if you're watching, Rich, and congratulations, guys. Uh, we've not heard from you, so I hope she turned up. <laughs> <laughs> we kid, obviously she did. We kid. Um, uh, but no. Yeah. Uh, and there's a really great story behind Swedish Oak as well. 
Kyle, would you care or would you like me to? No, no, go on. I was going to dive into it. I was just uh, enjoying the drum a little bit, uh, a little bit yeah, too much. Of, uh, you know, you know, to get that red face as we uh, right. as we get into uh, drum number four. The Carl uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but basically, there's a little bit of story about sweet uh, behind Swedish show because it's uh, uh, I guess back in sort of the Crusade, I think the 1500s was it a little bit later than that, Mick. Um, 1630. Six, thank you. Uh, the Swedish king essentially sent out um, emissaries to go find somewhere suitable uh, to plant a load of oak trees um, because at that time uh, ships were made of oak, uh, and oak broadly is a good uh, hard wood uh, to make ships out of. It's big, it's strong, it's not super knotty. Um, yeah, as you can see in the images there. So that would have been great for ship building. Um, so found this little island that was perfect for it, Vishingsu Island, uh, where we planted um, thousands and thousands of oak trees um, on that particular island itself. Um, I thought, right, cool. The trees are planted. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, let the trees grow nice and tall and strong, and we'll uh, we'll have the uh, we'll we'll harvest the wood and make our ships with them. Problem was, by the time they got around to harvesting the wood, we'd had ourselves an industrial revolution and ships decided to be made of metal instead. Um, so you've got all this wood um, that was not necessarily the most useful for shipbuilding at that point, but never fear. Um, all that wood is still handy for making furniture, for making um, whiskey casks, um, and all that other good stuff as well. Um, so it, not, it didn't go Imagine to waste. Those nice, big, long bits of wood for floorboards. How yeah. much easier would that make your life, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and that's that's essentially it in a nutshell. Um, anything else you want to add to that? No, I'm just back on that nutshell again. Back Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get out on that show. No, <laughs> yes. uh, but no, uh, one of the really interesting things, so, you know, even back then, uh, the Swedish people were quite innovative. So to grow these trees massively straight, yeah, uh, like ridiculously straight in, in all fairness. If you were to look at like a, a Swedish oak tree and compare it to like a, a British oak tree, yeah, you wouldn't think that they were the same family um, or come from a, a similar sort of family mm. um, because they're, they are unusually straight and unusually tall. Uh, so like Carl said, you know, they took like 150 years to like sort of get there from original. Um, but what they did actually in between the rows of oak trees uh, back at the time, they actually planted other sorts of uh, trees as well, like uh, birch trees, silver ferns, all that type of stuff. Sorry, excuse me. Um, to to make those oak trees and uh, grow straight and fight for that sunshine. Yeah, you know. Uh, to and, and that was that was the technology then. So you know, uh, at McNair, we we've carried that that innovation on. We like to think, you know, and that's one of our yeah. our three pillars that we stick to. Really, you know, innovation, sustainability, and Swedishness. Yeah. Uh, and we'll talk a bit about more about our unique twist on Swedishness uh, on our last dram. But no, so guys, let us know what you think of uh, Svenska. It's probably our, our flagship, what we call our flagship dram. Yeah. Uh, and just to remind you, it's 46.1%, uh, natural coloured, non chill filtered. Um, so yeah, please let us know uh, your thoughts. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say one thing I missed um, when I was sort of giving the uh, the background to the bottling as well is that you know I guess why Swedish oak um, is is an interesting point and what that does to the liquid. Um, so essentially, Swedish oak because of the uh, the latitude it kind of grows in, it's a much harsher climate for the wood to actually grow uh, compared to like North American oak, for example. Um, and what you tend to find as a result is that there's less um, xylose and lignin within the oak. Um, so yeah, you can see the grain grows differently. It's tighter, it's firmer. Uh, it's a lot harsher for it to grow. Um, so you get less wood sugars um, in there. Um, and as a result, that's why you get from a flavor perspective, uh, hopefully you can pick open the liquid you're drinking. That with North American, you get more sort of vanilla, caramels, fudge, butterscotch, that kind of thing. Whereas when you get European oak, um, you get a few more of those kind of um, kind of sandalwood, like anise, toasted bread, like those kind of slightly more, slightly more bitter, uh, slightly more kind of um, savoury notes kind of coming through uh, on yeah. that. And don't forget, this is only 10% uh, has spent its time in 100% Swedish oak cask. So you can imagine what a 100% Swedish oak um, cask whiskey uh, would taste like, for example. Um, and if you're interested in being part of our cast program, you actually can do that as well. Uh, I can see your eyes light up then, Mickey, when I mentioned that. So yeah, if you if you want to experiment what that would that would taste like, um, pop onto macmira.com and uh, uh, check it out. 
Yeah, so we've got some uh, we've got some private casks that are ready to go now that have been done in Swedish oak, and obviously you can join the reserve cask program as well, um, mm. which you know is thirty liter casks, so it's an affordable way uh, of becoming a cask owner. Uh, basically, on the reserve cask program, you yeah. choose the liquid uh, that goes into it. So the recipe, whether you want elegant, uh, smoky, extra smoky, uh, pre-stored, um, smoky and non-smoky, to then go into your your, your wood of choice, whether that be Swedish oak. Uh, we do a thing called an ambassador's cask, uh, which is a, a, a combination, uh, I'll beautifully put, a combination of bourbon, uh, of bourbon, ex-bourbon staves and Swedish oak ends. As you can tell from that picture there, those Swedish oak ends are, are very heavily charred and scored into to make the surface area of the wood greater. Uh, and it's done by that that absolutely handsome man right there, uh, David Anderson R. Cooper, um, at, that, down here is Cooperage, fourth generation Cooper. Uh, that is literally, my, my heart just melts and my legs every <laughs> time I see that picture. I've been seeing that picture for months and months and months now. Yeah. It's my favourite. So there's David in all his handsome glory. Yeah. I still do know the one with him holding the fiery cask. I think it's like literally the most, manliest of man casks uh, or pictures going um, quite frankly <laughs> yeah i think we need to i think we need to edit that photo and have like uh just like a really heavy rock riff playing over the background oh, without a doubt, yeah. like screaming yeah. guitar solo <laughs> yeah i think Carl, when we get to make it over to the distillery we pop down and see david at the cooperage i yeah, think we'll have to reenact it i think uh, yeah. sensibly obviously because that is actual proper live fire <laughs> that's, that's, you know that's that's no messing about that that's no uh, photoshop job no nothing like that like you know so yeah. i don't really want to like burn my face off literally but to reenact <laughs> that with, with that i think that would be pretty cool i think yeah so like i said the the the, the, the svenski Ek does take a drop of water really really quite well guys uh, so don't be afraid to uh, to do that uh, and actually it was svenski Ek i used the other day um, with a first Swedish twist uh, on a black Manhattan, um, so and that was just fantastic, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Uh, so a black uh, uh, a black Manhattan um, is so do the Swedish twist. Uh, you'll put in um, fifty mil of uh, Setsgek, uh, twenty five mil uh, Amaro Montenegro. Um, a couple of drops of orange bitters, uh, and then it's a stir down as opposed to a shake up. So put that all into a pint glass, a container, whatever you want, over some ice. Mm. Give it a really good stir for about a minute or so until you get a really good cold effect, and then strain it into a nice champagne coupe and um, garnish it with, well, a, a cherry, I suppose, if you wanted to, or whatever you fancy. Sometimes I don't bother, uh, but no. Highly recommend doing that. It's beautiful. Really, is very nice indeed. So, I think that nicely takes us on to um, to our last dram, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. uh, to the Svensk Rook. Um, I better pour some, really. So, it would help. This look, or Swedish smoke. Um, forty six point one percent. Yeah. Um, it's quite smoky and herbaceous, and if if you've never tried this before or Swedish peated, this our particular Swedish peated whiskey before, um, you're going to find a massive difference um, to any other peated whiskey you've you, you've tried before, really. Um, and I'll just and I'll and I'll tell you about that why as as we go on into the talking points in a little bit. Mm. But uh, yeah, so. Just absolutely fantastic jam. If you do not enjoy peated whiskey, please do, do give this a try. Okay? Yeah. This is what we call uh, probably like a gateway to peated whiskey, if you want to, you know, phrase it like that. But, no, it's a really good introduction to peated whiskey. Yeah. Uh, it's not got that big medicinal note that hits you in the face uh, like some uh, other more uh, more famously known peated whiskeys do. Um, but, no, so on the nose... Straight away, you can tell it's a bit smoky. You know what I mean? You get the, the herbaceousness coming through, and you'll find out why you're going to get that herbaceousness coming through in a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we've, you know, we've not used big casks for this. This is why this bottle comes in a 50 cl or a 500 ml bottle. Uh, it's a smaller batch, limited batch runs for a core range. Um, 
and we only use casks from, so we use casks of 30 litre, 100 litre, and 128 litre. And we use American oak, ex bourbon casks that were saturated in Oloroso, and Swedish oak casks in there as well. And it's, a, it's, it's quite a winning combination, I'll be honest with you. So I mentioned earlier that we do, uh, we, we do our, our smoking a little bit differently. So we are one of only 10 to 12 yeah. uh, distilleries in the world that actually um, floor malt and smoke our own malted barley. Okay. Uh, so we, we, we floor malt it in a shipping container next to the distillery. Uh, fantastic smoke master, uh, Hakan. Uh, we do, there he is, handsome bugger. Uh, you can see that, that amount of smoke that's coming out the door there. Uh, he actually, um, he'll replenish our peak fire. Um, over three days, he'll replenish every four hours. Yeah. So we make we make a fire of wood, uh, using the wood for, from, from the forest and, and what we've got available. Uh, on top of that, uh, not on top of the wood, but on top of the grate. So think of like a barbecue. So we put the, the coals in, as it were. Um, we put in our locally sourced peat from the Karamosin or the Bog of Karens. <laughs> and <laughs> Another crap joke, guys, sorry. Uh, and on top of the peat, uh, the smoldering peat, we actually put juniper twigs. So uh, again, keeping up with um, our sustainability and cons- conservation, all that sort of stuff, we don't go out and cut juniper branches down all willy-nilly and stuff like that. We don't do that, no. Um, The local power company, when they go around and uh, conduct their uh, preventative maintenance, so, you know, so their their engineers and stuff like that can get access to the power lines and power stations and all that type of stuff, they they have to cut away the juniper bushes. So we take that at excess, say that just getting willy-nilly burnt or whatever. Uh, We use the juniper uh, back at the Brooks Distillery, which is now our gin distillery since 2017. And we take the twigs uh, and we put them onto our uh, on top of our our locally forested uh, our locally harvested peat, mm-hmm. uh, which gives it that lovely resinous herbaceous smoke yeah. that you saw that that you saw coming out of the door there with, with the picture of Hakan, and and that's where you're going to get that herbaceousness from. So yeah. it is that that influence, believe it or not, of of the juniper twigs uh, to create that really resinous herbaceous smoke that, that goes through the malt um, b- before, obviously, we make it. But we actually, believe it or not, we actually smoke our malt to 60 ppm. So that's phenol parts per million. And that's how you measure how much, how peated your whiskey is yeah. pre, pre-production. pre Okay, but we don't actually, so you, you'll taste that and go, no way is that a 60 ppm whiskey. And you're right, it's not. So we don't actually use 100% peated barley for our peated run. Mm. What we do is we use approximately 23 to 25% uh, peated barley to then um, 77 to 75% of our elegant recipe, so our non-peated barley. Mm. And we mix that through to make our, 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 our rook run. We do an extra rook uh, recipe as well for our 30 litre cask, 30 litre cask program. Um, and that's double the amount, basically, of, of peated barley. So we're still not a hundred percent peated barley for a smoky run. Uh, so that's so the PPM is taken down in the mash bill, and obviously yeah. you lose you lose two thirds of your of your initial PPM through the distillation process. Anyway, that happens pretty much with 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 everybody uh, in the whiskey industry. Uh, so yeah, uh, so we've taken that that like I said earlier, one of the three pillars. Uh, of Mac Mirror is Swedishness, you know, innovation, sustainability, and Swedishness. Yeah, we've used Swedish peat, Swedish water, Swedish barley, Swedish juniper. So we put that Scandinavian twist on it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, by using that juniper. Um, and it's quite frankly, I, I really very much enjoy it. What about yourself, Carl? I'll, I'd agree. I, I think you mentioned as well, like a gateway uh, into smoky whiskies as yeah. well. Because like, you definitely get the smoke on the nose. I think, uh, in a nutshell, smoky and herbaceous is probably the way you kind of underpin what the Svensson Rook is about. Um, but when you get it on your palate, it isn't a massive, massive, over, overly um, really overly challenging attack of smokiness. Um, you know, with some smoky whiskies, they can be very jarring so straight off the bat. But I think this is a good one to kind of build your palate up into smoky whiskey 
And if you are someone who already does drink smoky whiskies, there's still enough of a uh, interesting characteristic about it uh, to add it to your collection. Uh, I'm yes. a big fan of smoky whiskies overall, from you know from all regions in particular, obviously Isla. Um, but I think this one sort of stands with that with that juniper influence, that kind of you know resinous herbaceousness. I think that sort of uh, helps it kind of stand apart. Definitely, uh, and I'm a big big fan of it. Not to interrupt your flow there, Cole. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, Gary. Mm. Uh, yeah, please do buy some bottles. Obviously, sorry you have to leave us. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left as well uh, before we start to wrap things up. But if you need yeah. to pop off, then please do. You can rewatch this back. Uh, if, if you want to, <laughs> and, yeah. and you, you find it, I, I find it on YouTube and on our Facebook stuff like that as well. But no, thank you very much for tuning in, Gary, uh, and have a pleasant evening. Uh, and don't forget your code Bjork South Forty. Uh, sorry, Cole, back to you. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was just going to say, yeah, just on that point, I, I, I was going to say, like, I think one of the things that is really interesting for me about our core range is that you've got that diversity in there. Um, you know, just just across the core range, you've got what sweet oaks, um, dusty liquid. You've got um, what smoke. Um, an, an interpretation of Swedish oak um, gives you, and then you've obviously got your breakfast whiskey and Brooks whiskey and your Mac as, as your experimental cocktail one. So across the core range, you've got loads of different um, experiences covered. Uh, and then obviously with the seasonal range, in this particular instance tonight, our Bjorks have, um, again, you're getting more diverse whiskey. So uh, don't forget that code, Bjorks have 40. Uh, if you do have two particular standouts that you really enjoyed tonight, as long as one of them is Bjorks have, <laughs> yeah, you can get any of the other core range for forty percent off. Um, so yeah, make sure you use that code at checkout on macmirror.com. Fantastic. So um, that pretty much time for us to start wrapping up, Carlos. Yeah. Actually, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, Carl's just been over the uh, the deal again. It says Bjorks have forty by any uh, seventy CL. Uh, bottle of Bjork have and receive 40% off uh, any of the core range, which is our Mac, Brooks, Svenskiek, Svenskiek. Uh, and uh, use the, like I said, use the, co the code for Bjork have 40 uh, at the checkout, guys. Um, so if, if you've really enjoyed this, uh, please tell your friends and stuff like that as well. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday, the 8th of July. Uh, at seven o'clock, and uh, not to repeat this, but do a, a similar tasting with the same whiskies. Uh, oh, brilliant, Pascal! You like smoky whiskey? Uh, most are a bit too tasteful for the summer. I agree. This one is nicely balanced. First time, yeah, uh, brilliant. Oh, thirty degrees in the Netherlands, very warm and nice. decent. May I suggest then with uh, a smoky whiskey, if you've got a particular one that's quite smoky, um, serve it in a highball glass over a decent amount of ice, top up with ginger ale. Um, have nice. a nice big slice of orange peel, zest it over the top and drop yes. that in. Um, and it really does make your peated whiskey uh, more accessible uh, yeah. in the summer, if, if that's where you want to phrase it. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy that. Uh, that was introduced to me uh, by my by my good friend uh, and fellow international um, whiskey uh, brand ambassador, sales manager kind of guy at Shilton Almeida uh, at Paul John. Uh, he introduced me to that. We were drinking in the pots doing Glasgow. And he went, right, let's have one of these. He's like, brilliant. And I've drunk them all that summer then. Just dead warm all summer. Nice. And I was drinking them. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, so, yeah. Oh, we've actually got a really cool show next week um, on the 23rd. Uh, that's what Wednesday. Wednesday. 23rd Wednesday. Uh, Church calendar, yes. Yes, so Wednesday the 23rd. Um, I won't be the main host, uh, but uh, one of my colleagues uh, from the distillery, um, yeah, at the Gravity Distillery, will be hosting a show uh, via our Facebook and our YouTube. Uh, yep. We'll be joined, uh, joined by me, uh, one of our colleagues from Germany, uh, and another one of our colleagues from Sweden. And we're going to... Um, we're going to pop the bottle of uh, our new moment, um, uh, Brooks Whiskey Deluxe. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to try that against Brooks Whiskey, and we're going to chat about it and, you know, how some of us drink whiskey differently. So it should be good. It should be a good, a good fun, half-hour chat. That that Those words, they got really stumbled up out of there. That was ridiculous. So that should be a really good. So that's next Wednesday <laughs> as well. And then, like I said, we'll be back on Thursday the 8th, at seven o'clock for um, not a repeat performance, 
uh, but uh, a similar, hopefully, looking yeah. performance because consistency is key. <laughs> so, yeah, so join us for that. And like I said uh, at the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, if you are part of a whiskey club, um, especially from the UK, uh, please, and you want us to come and do a tasting for you, please let us know. Uh, we'll be in touch with you and sort something out. Our unders, fantastic, sir. Thank you very much. So if you are considering a reserve cask, like unders said, the combination of the Swedish oak and the smoky whiskey is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, cannot disagree with that whatsoever. Uh, so, guys, thank you so much uh, again for your interactions this evening. It's so great to see people uh, from just outside the UK uh, joining in. Uh, it's been lovely to have you. Some lovely interactions. Thank you kindly. Uh, Carl, any last words from yourself, sir? No, just uh, thank you for having me. Mickey, thank you for bearing with me. Uh, and I'll go to my usual hovel behind the screen, uh, hopefully controlling you and uh, <laughs> you and Rich very, very soon. Fantastic. No, I've been an absolute pleasure to have you, sir. Uh, it's, it's nice to have you back again. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much for joining us. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. Hope you enjoyed the drums. Shkong. Let's go.